Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to London. Welcome to Buckingham Palace. Today I'm starting at Buckingham Palace because today I want to talk about and share with you a little of the Queen's birthday celebrations, annual celebration, public celebration here in central London. The reason I say public, the, the Queen has two birthdays. Well, there's a long tradition of the British monarch having two birthdays. It's purely practical. Um, the public celebrations are a parade here on the streets of London. And uh, the weather, there's a small window of opportunity for suitable weather. So the Queen's official birthday, the monarch's official birthday, is usually around the second week of June. Um, this, this year is the third week. Um, what it involves is the army in full dress uniform escorting the royal family from Buckingham Palace down the mall here to a parade ground at the end of the mall called Horse Guards Parade which is between Admiralty Arch, uh, Whitehall, St James's Park which is there and Downing Street which is home of the Prime Minister. So the army in full dress uniform escort the, um, the royal family to the parade. There's then a parade, which I'm going to watch today. Um, and then they escort the army once the parade's completed and the Queen's inspected her army. They escort the royal, the army escort the royal family back to the palace. The, uh, the royal family then make an appearance on the balcony of um, Buckingham Palace. And uh, then the Royal Air Force fly their favourite planes and toys um, along the mall and over the palace, which sounds phenomenal. Um, yeah, they sound as probably more impressive than they look. I'm guessing if uh, they weren't friendly, that impressive would turn to intimidating pretty rapidly. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the streets today are pretty empty because I'm going to a full dress rehearsal. There are the main parade, the troops will have been practicing for months. They're probably planning next year's already. Um, but there is a dress rehearsal two weeks prior to the actual event and the week prior to the actual event. And you can apply for tickets. Um, I've got tickets to the Major General's Review, which is two weeks prior to actual birthday celebrations. Then the week prior, it's called the Colonel's Review. And the main difference is the Royal Family is absent. And obviously there might be a few missed missteps. Uh, it's a dress rehearsal. Um, and the other major difference in terms of visiting um, dress code um, smart casual for this one the major general view then gets um, almost a full dress rehearsal for the public attending for the colonel's review the week before and then the actual event the proper dress is full morning dress although they'll let you in in a, uh, a smart suit um, but yeah by smart casual this week they mean you don't need to wear a jacket and a tie it's still strictly no denim um, so I'm coming to this because my family got tickets so uh, my niece and nephew will be there so uh, you don't have to wear jackets and ties um, but yeah it's a full dress rehearsal for everything um, including security here got the TV crews in position they're all manned as well um, but yeah what a lot of people don't know is about the dress rehearsals a lot of this will be absolutely mobbed for the actual Queen's birthday so obviously people want to get a glimpse of the pomp and pageantry but also the royal family themselves but if you just if you're in town in Sometimes late May and the um, first few weeks of June. It's definitely worth coming and checking out because you effectively get to see the, uh, all the pomp and pageantry just minus the royal family. So the army in full dress uniform will parade down here to the parade ground where I'm headed. And then after the parade, they parade back. Um, so this is a great spot and as you can see, pretty quiet if you look at it on the actual day. It's mobbed. You'll still get a place here, but up by the palace where people are waiting for the uh, the royal family to appear on the balcony is really hard to get close to on the actual day. Um, another good spot on the actual day is just next to the palace in Green Park. 
the cannons, the horse-drawn cannons that are part of this, um, have a gun salute. So they fire off the cannons in the park, which is pretty cool to watch. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's head down to parade, take my seat, and uh, check out the Major General's review of uh, this year's Trooping the Colour. There is good reason for the relentless practice of Trooping the Colour. Not only has Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Family watching, but also very many British servicemen and women, past, present and future, and so-called military experts will be watching. And with the fierce rivalry between the regiments, they're not watching to praise this year's parade. They will be scrutinising every minor detail and every mistake made. OK, that's Horse Guards Parade there, the parade ground. There's an entrance to the stands there, but that's not my entrance. Um, my entrance is at the other end, so I'm just going to cut across St James's Park here, um, come out the other side by Big Ben and Houses of Parliament and my entrance is there on the uh, that corner of uh, Downing Street. My parents are coming today actually, they're entering via Downing Street, no idea how that works. That would have been cool for uh, this video, although I would have yeah, sharing that probably wouldn't work but uh right let's head through st james's park it's a nice day today actually um so far the weather like, like i say this the practicalities of this the day is for the weather but i mean even today some years some years this is a washout um the actual event not the i mean the rehearsals aren't, aren't important but the well they are important but not as important um but yeah, some years it's a complete washout, cold, rainy. Um, other years it's so hot, the uh, the guards are passing out. Um, and today, when I woke up, it went from spring to summer to winter as usual. Um, it was sunny a moment ago, um, but it definitely feels like it might rain. I've got suntan cream on, an umbrella and a hat for when it rains. <laughs> British weather. Okay, this is Horse Guards Parade just here. Um, normally when this isn't happening, you can walk through the arch there, you can walk across Horse Guards Parade. Um, but if you, if you want to see it, you don't have tickets. They've got uh, spectating here. Uh, today I'm in the actual stands. Um, but yeah, this is a good spot. Right next to uh, Lake of St. James's Park. can make them out on that rock pelican sometimes they're here on the banks they're massive uh, their ancestors were a gift from the Russian ambassador in 1664 they've been there ever since right this is my entrance here so I need to go around these barriers yes they cordon off a lot of Westminster for this um, yeah I need to get through security show you where we are quickly. Down here is uh, Big Ben, Palace of Westminster, Houses Apartment. See if you can make it out just through the trees. Just there. Right, I'm going to head back down to that security gate. I'm not going to film it from here. I'm not going to film security, I want to get in. See you on the other side. Okay, I'm in front row seats. I've got the program. Found my family. Now we're just waiting for it to begin. 
Trooping the colour has a very long history. In the Middle Ages, each lord or baron simply flew his flag or banner as a sign by which his followers could distinguish him in a battle. As more flags were created, there came to be a wide range of hues, and they came to be called colours. By the Civil War of 1642, colours were in use for individual companies, so a battalion could have had 10 or more in a battle. The regulations of 1661 established order, and from 1707, during Queen Anne's reign, the number of colours was reduced to two per regiment. The principal role of a regiment's colours was to provide a rallying point on a battlefield, and that was essential because without modern communications, historically, it would have been very easy for troops to become disorientated and separate from their unit during conflicts. However, if troops were to be able to find their colours in the chaos of battle, they needed to be able to recognise them first. So it became the practice to display them regularly and that was achieved by parading the troops and having an officer march along the ranks with the colours held high. Colours were last carried into action by the 58 foot in South Africa in 1881, however trooping ceremonies continue to this day. The colours also carry battle honours, the names and places where a regiment has fought with courage and distinction. So they also serve as a reminder of hard won victories, great sacrifice and the loss of comrades. So before being presented by the sovereign, a regiment's colours are consecrated in a religious ceremony. For these reasons, colours have become icons that symbolise a regiment's history and traditions. For Guards regiments, the colours also symbolise their direct and enduring link to our sovereign. The Sovereign's escort of the Household Cavalry Mounted Regiment carries a Sovereign standard which is its equivalent of a Foot Guard's regimental colour. The lead gun of the Royal Horse Artillery is signalled in the same way. The Guards are among the oldest regiments of the British Army and they have served as personal bodyguards of the Sovereign since the monarchy was restored after the Civil War of 1660. The ceremony of trooping the colour is believed to have been first performed during the reign of King Charles II between 1660 and 1685. In 1748 it was decided that this parade would be used to mark the official birthday of the Sovereign and it became an annual event after George III became King in 1760. As the guards taking part in the parade have always been drawn from the regiments of the Sovereign's own household troops, it's become practice for them to troop their colours in turn. This year, the 1st Battalion Irish Guards is trooping its colour. Each Guards regiment usually has two colours, a Queen's colour and a regimental colour. Whenever the Sovereign is present, it is always the Queen's colour that's carried. Both the Queen's and regimental colours of the Irish Guards carry 21 of the regiment's battle honours. The most recent are Al Basra and Iraq, written on the colours as Iraq 2003 which was bestowed on the Irish Guards as the first regiment to be awarded a battle honour in that conflict. As well as the regimental battle honours, the Queen's colour also bears the Royal Cipher encircled by the collar of the Order of St Patrick. Irish Guardsmen wear the Star of St Patrick on their cap star on their headdress and use the motto which translated from Latin means who shall separate us. The colours of the 1st Battalion Irish Guards were presented by Her Majesty the Queen on the 6th of May 2009 at Windsor Castle. The colour being trooped today is the 9th Queen's colour to be held by the 1st Battalion and the 5th presented by Her Majesty. There are six different groups of soldiers in the ceremony. The foot guards, the mass bands of the household division, the sovereign's escort of the household cavalry, the mounted band of the household cavalry, the King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery and the Streetliners, soldiers lining the processional route from Buckingham Palace to Horse Guards Parade. There are multiple parts to the day's ceremony including a procession here, the parade here, a procession back to the palace and then a number of events after the procession. But for the parade here on horse guards there are nine phases to the parade. First of all the march on which we're seeing now, then the arrival of the sovereign, thirdly the inspection of the line, then massed bands troop, then collection of the colour to be trooped by the escort, then trooping the colour through the ranks in slow time followed by a march passed by the foot guards in slow and quick time then a ride passed by the King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery and the Household Cavalry and then the march off.
Okay, now the guards are settled in their positions. In a moment, they will shoulder their arms and fix bayonets. Now, the next set of carriages to arrive here on Horse Guards Parade as part of the procession along the mall on the day will contain members of the royal family. Today is just a dress rehearsal, so the carriages will be empty, but we still all need to pretend um, that the royal family are here. So when the carriages get to the northeast corner there of Horse Guards Parade, the band will play a few bars of the national anthem and we, the audience will be expected to stand, anyone in uniform to salute. Gentlemen will need to remove their hats and ladies may curtsy. Okay, so the horse-drawn carriages there which on the day will be carrying members of the royal family will pass through the centre arch of the centre building which is where they will watch the parade from. Once they've passed through the arch, the podium there which has two chairs on for Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh will be put in centre position. I guess they're not chairs now, they've become thrones. So now everybody is eagerly awaiting arrival of Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh at this stage on the day.
parade grounds back open again to the public. Um, I hope you enjoyed this trip, starting in Buckingham Palace, down the mall to Horse Guards Parade, and a glimpse at this year's Queen's birthday celebrations, Queen's birthday parade, um, aka Trooping of the Colour. So, uh, thanks for watching, and until next time, toodles. Just say, um, it smells like horses. Leave it at that. I found my mother, who for some reason somehow is delaying a very patient Coldstream guard, considering what he's just done from returning to his barracks, who she doesn't know, for a photo opportunity with her grandkids. No, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Excuse me. Thank you. Oh, my niece was having it. My nephew's having none of it. I don't know if I even got that. Thank you. Okay, post trooping of the colour, we've come to the pub, the Shandos by Charing Cross. Check it out. What is this? Kids allowed. The Shandos pub near Charing Cross is a Samuel Smith's pub, two storeys. We're on the upper floor, which has more seating for dining. Downstairs is a very traditional looking wooden panelled bar. Samuel Smith's is a brewery, they only serve their own drinks, so it's great value for money for central London. Traditional pub grub, chicken burger there, fish finger sandwiches, garlic bread, pies and mash and chips. The food's great value for money too for central London. I've got myself a fish finger sandwich and chips. Check out the size of those fish fingers. 